tutorial about how to play the piece that's asked for the MSBOA Middle School All-State Audition. It is number 63 in the Getchel Book 1. Looks like this. And you can probably get it from your band director. First thing you should do is write measure numbers in every measure because I'll be referring to those. Now, as you get started, you realize that the piece is pretty simple. The actual notes themselves are not difficult. Because of that, pretty much everyone who is playing this audition will be able to play the notes. So you have to do a little more than just play the notes in order to get into All State Band. You're going to have to make some music. So let's talk about some different things you can do to inject some music you know, into the, the simple notes that are on the page. So first thing we're going to talk about is articulation or tonguing. You notice that every note in this piece is articulated or tongued. There's nothing slurred. There's not a lot of variation. So what we're going to do is come up with some variation of our own to, uh, to put into the place. We have 16th notes, 8th notes, and quarter notes. What I'm going to do is assign a different type of tongue and different type of style to each note and that'll make them sound a little different. So the 16th notes, I'm going to call those light. I'm going to have like a light four 16th notes leading to a downbeat or to a eighth note or 16th note or quarter note. And the quarter notes are going to be sustained and held. And then finally the eighth notes are bouncy. So listen to what the first phrase sounds like if I just play all the notes the same. Not very exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the bouncy eighth notes, the sustained quarter notes, and the light leading sixteenth notes. Sounds a lot more interesting and it'll be a lot more engaging to the listener. So the second thing we're going to talk about is dynamics. Now you notice the dynamic written in the music says piano and there's no variation. So it would be pretty boring if you played the whole piece like that without any variation. So we have to add some variation of our own. Um, for one thing, don't play it, don't take that piano too literally. If it's too soft, that's not going to make the judge sit up and listen. But if you play it, what I call a solo piano, or just add a, an M in front of the piano so it's mezzo piano, to show you that you don't want to play it too timid. You want to you want to play it out. Something more like that. And the other dynamic thing we want to do is shape the phrase with some slight, subtle dynamics. So they're not worth writing in. You know, you're not doing a big crescendo, but you're doing small movement as the line moves up and down. So, for instance, you crescendo as you go up, as a general rule, and you diminuendo as it goes down. So listen how that sounds. As the line goes up, 
I make a little crescendo. <laughs> So you heard in the second line, for instance, measures five through eight, I started at the highest dynamic and diminuended across each bar as the line went down. So it's starting to really take shape now between the bouncy notes and the, the nice articulation variation that you're doing and the subtle dynamics that you're adding and playing out. It's really starting to sound like a piece of music. And the last thing, you want to put in some breath marks because what might happen if you don't is that you could take a breath unplanned in the middle of a phrase and break up what, where you want the phrase to go. So I would put breaths in the following places. At the end of bar four, right on the bar line between bar four and five, put a breath mark. After the first beat of measure nine, so in measure nine, you have a downbeat that you want to be the last note of the phrase. So for instance, in measure eight, hear how that from measure eight going to measure nine, you don't want a breath mark on that bar line. You want to go to the downbeat of measure nine and then take the breath. I take another breath at the end of bar 10, between bar 10 and 11 on the bar line, and I want to have a climax between 12 and 13. The beginning of bar 13 is the climax, so I don't want to have a breath right before that. So like I said, I'm taking a breath between bar 10 and bar 11 at the bar line, and then I'm not taking another breath until after the first beat of bar 15. So listen to how all that sounds. I'm starting in measure eight. So as you can see, the breath marks help me breathe in the right places. So I would suggest you write in those breaths or the breaths that you want to take. Practice breathing in the same place every time so it's not haphazard and make sure, you know, that gives you the best chance of having the breaths exactly where you want them every time. So to sum up, we've talked about, we have simple notes in this piece. We have to do something special to make it sound musical. We're going to vary our articulation and our note lengths so that we have bouncy eighth notes, sustained quarter notes, and light sixteenth notes. And we're going to shape each phrase with subtle dynamics, moving, crescendoing as you go up and decrescendoing as you go down. And the overall volume shouldn't be too soft. It should be a mezzo piano or a solo piano. And finally, you're going to breathe in places that are complementary to the music, that don't break up the phrase, that don't interrupt your musical phrase, and you're going to mark the breaths and practice doing it the same way every time so that you're sure that you're going to breathe in the right places when the time comes. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. And log on to msboa.org or talk to your band director to find out how to audition for All State Middle School Band.